Hello everyone and welcome yet to another video. This time I'm bringing you guys the Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1 CPU cooler. Um, I was looking online for a little cooler that wouldn't break the budget for a little budget build that I'm working on. And this thing here uh, came across. Uh, so I decided to pull the trigger on it and at the same time do a quick review on it. Why not? Uh, to give you guys an idea what you can expect from a little budget cooler like this one here um, again this is not a top of the line you know a performer um, and you can find this uh, little CPU cooler online uh, for about 32 US dollars now when I say it's not a top of the line performer I, I don't mean that it is a bad product what I mean to say that you know you cannot compare this little cooler here to for example a Noctua NHD 15 or a Corsair H105 uh, uh, or anything like that uh, but for its price point uh, this thing here actually does fairly well now this little cooler here is targeted for those on a budget but at the same time who want to 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 have a rig that looks that, that looks good you know you want to show off your parts and you don't want the CPU cooler to be that one you know that, that offsets everything else this here will, will will help you keep that uh, the, the cool aspect to your rig if you especially if you have the, the you know the window to show off your components so this is uh, this is perfect uh, perfect for that uh, for that purpose this here as you can see this is your backplate that you're going to use for installing the CPU here you have your brackets that you will also need for uh, over on the other side of the motherboard to mount the cooler onto your onto your CPU itself. Here are the many different uh, screws for AMD, uh, Intel 2066 sockets, and so on. And here you have uh, where we're going to use today the uh, the Intel 1151 or 1150 series um, uh, socket. And here has some rubber gummits for installing another an extra fan and brackets as well for an extra fan. Uh, another cool thing uh, I liked here is that they give you uh, some uh, quality thermal paste included. Uh, you have your MX4 thermal paste and a little baggie there which is nice. Uh, this is uh, uh, quality thermal paste like I said so that's a nice touch by Arctic. Alright so let's go ahead and uh, take a close look at the cooler itself. Um, one thing I have to point out uh, first thing is that um, I like the the way this cooler feels uh, it, it doesn't feel like a cheap product especially when you feel the fins uh, how everything's laid out uh, it looks like Arctic um, made an excellent product at a great uh, price point um, so uh, I am very happy with the way uh, the the the, the, the heatsink feels also when you took when you take a look at the close details um, uh, the fan uh, for example and uh, the material the flat matte black color of the the heatsink itself um, it's a great touch it's gonna look great inside of uh, in any system you want to throw this thing in um, one other thing too that uh, it had me worried for a little bit is the fact that the everything is painted black and I thought maybe the paint would have some impact on performance but uh, uh, as you guys are about to see, no, it, it, it doesn't uh, affect it at all. Um, and also, uh, I, I read up on this too as well, and uh, apparently this is something that actually aids in the cooling process. Uh, the paint has something to to add to the, to the cooling um, of the cooler itself. So, uh, to the performance of the cooler itself. So, uh, it is something that, it, you know, you don't have to worry about there. Uh, but again, it is a well-made product. Um, it, it, it looks great. Uh, it's not too heavy either, so you know that's not something that you uh, you would want to worry about there. And uh, I'm going to remove here uh, the, the brackets. You don't have to remove the brackets to remove the fan, by the way. You could just uh, snap them off there uh, um, uh, from the uh, from the little holes there on the on the fan, and you know the, the brackets swing to the side. But I'm going to do this just to show you guys how uh, how everything is fit there. The fan includer with the cooler is actually pretty silent, even ramped up all the way up to 1800 RPM. You cannot hear this thing at all. It is a three-phase fan and Arctic claims that uh, it runs 10 degree, 10 degrees uh, cooler um, and that's why they extend the warranty on it uh, for 10 years.
Now looking at the direct touch heat pipe base here, you can sell you you can you can kind of see the texture. There's not too polished, uh, and it doesn't have too rough uh, rough of a surface there. Um, uh, there's a misconception as far as uh, you know how the base is supposed to look. Uh, some some will tell you that you know ha ha having it polished uh, creates a better uh, dissipation of heat, but actually having it a little rough uh, as it is here uh, creates more surface area due to little microscopic uh, little cracks there. So that actually aids in the dissipation of heat. Snapping the fans back on is actually pretty simple. You just gotta. Uh, swing the, bra the, the the brackets there, the catch into the little holes there on the back of the fan uh, on both sides and you know the, the fan basically just uh, snaps on with the little brackets there so it's it's, it's an easy uh, foolproof uh, mechanism you just gotta take your time and don't get too carried away so you don't bend anything there Alright, so let's go ahead and get this thing installed. The first thing that we need to do is uh, set the back plate in place so we can mount the uh, the brackets where they need to go for the installation of the CPU. But first, we need to install the brackets themselves onto the CPU base uh, for support because uh, this is how it's going to be uh, installed over the chip itself. All right, so now it's time to apply the thermal paste. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and spread it. I know that you can get away with just a P method, but I, I don't want to take any chances. So I want to make sure that every single corner of the, uh, the, the CPU um, integrated heat sink is covered with uh, thermal paste just to prevent any, um, you know, any gaps or anything like that. I want to make sure that uh, there is uh, good contact between the, the cooler and the IHS. Now here during the installation process, you guys want to take your time. Don't don't want to rush this here. And if you have a magnetic tip, magnetic tip screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver that is, will greatly help you um, insert the screws there in the little the little holes where they need to be. Otherwise, I would highly recommend that you install this cooler with the motherboard outside of the case, just so that you have plenty of room to work with. Otherwise, it could become a pain in the butt to get uh, this thing installed. One more thing that I like to add is that if uh, for any reason you, you know you, you're not able to line up the cooler properly there with the holes, do not lift up the heat sink off the IHS. Just try to move it around and you know line up the holes because if you do lift it up, that means that you break the contact between the IHS and the the cooler itself, and that creates the micro you know little bubbles there and the thermal paste, and that could cause problems later on because now you just create a little gaps where there won't be a, a clean contact between the two surfaces. So uh, yeah, don't 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 lift up the heat the heat sink. Don't lift it up. Just move it, move it around, wobble it around until you get the, the, the holes lined up correctly. So let's go ahead and run a quick stress test on the CPU here. This is the i5-8600K processor. I have it overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz at 1.43 volts. This thing will easily burn up on you if you do not have the proper cooling. One more thing that I don't want to leave out is that I have deleted this processor. Or I have uh, changed or replaced the uh, thermal interface material between the heatsink and the core. I've added a uh, Thermal Grizzly conducting out there, so that uh, dropped about 20 degrees uh, from the uh, the temperatures. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Um, now before this, I, uh, with this processor, I have the CryoRig R5 Ultimate CPU cooler. That that was a great that is a great uh, CPU CPU cooler itself. 
Um, so here is uh, what, what it looked like um, when I was running the Cryo Rig R5 Ultimate, now running with the Arctic Freezer 33 Sports 1. So you can clearly tell the difference there, about 5 degrees uh, temperature uh, drop from the, uh, the Arctic cooling to the Cryo Rig R5 Ultimate. Nevertheless, this CPU cooler did a pretty good job. I'm actually pretty happy with it. That I am just going to leave it here in the system. I, um, you know, I don't see the need for anything else. So I think I'm just going to stick with this little cooler here. I'm very happy with it, and uh, I'll leave it here. This is all I have for now. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please hit thumbs up if you liked it. If not, you know what to do. Please subscribe for more content coming up, and I will see you guys in the next one. You all take care now. Bye bye.